241 LS cylinder heads. Haven't made any videos in a while and I apologize. So I thought I would give you a little bit of progress on these. Just a little flashback over here. This is the uh, remnants of that 26 spline rear uh, axle that exploded on me at the racetrack. I think I'm going to keep that just as a something to talk about when people come by. Cause I mean to tell you that thing totally just exploded. That was a pretty cool night though. Still had fun. Um, what I was going to show you guys these are uh, number 241 LS1 and I do mean LS1. These are the 5.7 cylinder heads. But I was going to show everyone if you look at the blue dicum, then you'll see like a little line that I scribed, just, just rudimentarily scribed, where the floor of the port is. And then you can see where the gasket comes out to. I wish my phone would focus a little bit better. But if you look inside of the gasket, but outside of the port opening, you can see where the stock manifolds were burning black on the head. It almost made, almost like a scribe line. I just can't, this thing, I don't think it'll focus. Yeah, it's not going to focus when you get that close, but there's almost like a little scribe line where the exhaust was burning on the head. What I was going to try to show everybody is these are Felpro Fel replacement gaskets. If you'll look, I haven't even quite, I mean I'm within, I'd say probably a 32nd of an inch from getting to that scribed line or that line where the exhaust was burning on these ports. And of course everyone should know by now from watching my videos you never mess with the floor you don't go down on an exhaust port you can go up but I want everyone to notice I have literally raised I got three of them rough cut and then I uh, had to go upstairs but I wanted everybody to see I have raised the roof 235 thousandths on these exhaust ports because that's what I do to these LS style heads and then just kind of kind of went with a D port shape I stay within those this is what I try to do and, and it'll it'll get 210 CFM plus exhaust flow when I get done with this thing but what I'm showing you is you're still well within the factory gasket but you're going to maintain a straight wall larger 235 thousandths raised port a little bit wider walls and it'll all blend perfectly flat flat straight walls back into that bowl work that I'm going to do I'm going to narrow and shape the guide and you're still way inside that gasket that they use or that Felpro uses for these LS heads. It's kind of strange why they put such a large opening because I guarantee there's some head porters that describe that and open that thing all the way up but unless you're running a really large tube header you're not going to gain anything by having that port dump straight into a, a manifold. So what I'm trying to show everybody is that this is what the factory port looks like you can still stay inside of the factory manifolds or you know normal size headers without race style headers and make a huge improvement over the uh, uh, I'm gonna call it just the runner the exhaust runner as it enters the header or the exhaust manifold because like I said when I get done with these exhaust ports they're gonna flow 210 CFM or more. I've proven that 
on a flow bench. But it's just amazing how they almost give you the setup you need to greatly improve the flow characteristics of these LS heads still stay in, stay inside a reasonable size manifold or header and make great power you know these things are I don't know the engineers are actually thinking when they design these heads but I will continue you know, these like I said these are just rough cut I'm just doing my rough cut then I'll do my medium then I'll do my fine and finish you know with the fine double cut burrs and the sanding rolls and all that to make it look cool but basically just identify the bottom of that port and you know you, you gotta keep in mind the heads showing upside down so nobody get confused raise that runner be leery there is a little uh, lump if you look just past my finger right here there's a little bump right there that's actually a factory reinforcement to the bottom of the spring pocket I will generally kind of contour that basically just make it as rounded and somewhat flat as I can but I try to um, deter people from just cutting that thing all the way out and making it perfectly flat right there because if you go to a double spring or some kind of really strong spring pressure in the future you don't want to run any chances of cracking through into your port and it's not going to be detriment it's not going to be detrimental to your uh, port flow because the sides I wish I could beam in on that thing a little bit better but that little reinforcement bump for your spring pocket which you run into a lot on the new uh, Chrysler Hemi heads you can basically take the ends of it off over here where the air is going to flow on either side of this guide boss you'll pretty much remove all that and then just contour the middle of it you'll still maintain your structural integrity and, and gain flow uh, other than that that's pretty much all I've done on these heads so far is just kind of play with doing my rough cut uh, building my D port shape for my exhaust ports um, I've done all my math on what I'm going to do on my bowl cuts for the intake and exhaust uh, if you're familiar with these LS style heads these heads already come with the 2 inch they have the 2.00 inch intake valves and the 155 exhaust which I, I know a lot of people do upgrades where they put the 2 inch valves in the lesser performance LS castings and that's a good upgrade something that I do is that little swirl ramp I don't know if you guys are familiar with these heads at all but that little swirl ramp I remove it I make it a balanced port I mean it's always going to have a port bias to the wider side because that's just the way the heads are casted but you'll lower that uh, swirl ramp down to the floor of the bowl do your bowl cut to the uh, percentage or diameter percentage that you uh, select blend it all the way in as usual you will clean up not much because these things are really high quality casting look how wide and perfectly contoured that short turn is on these LS heads but I'll do my bowl cut blend it all the way in the bowl remove the swirl ramp work the guide and uh, just clean up and blend everything on the short turn and you know, pull it all the way out to that new opening same thing on the exhaust side I don't know if you guys can see that in there it's got a little bit of a ridge which was real prominent in those Edelbrock heads I just worked on but I will get that bowl cut and blend on them work the short turn and guide it's going to be a really good set of heads uh, the work I do to these LS heads they'll flow 270 plus on the intake 
210 plus CFM on the exhaust and that's a big kick in the pants especially over the factory I think these I want to say the 241 heads only flow <clears throat> it's either 223 or 227 CFM factory I know that a lot of people try to sell them as some great head that flows you know 300 CFM out of the box but that's just not the case you can make them flow 300 CFM without a great deal of, of headache but they don't do that factory they flow, you know, low two or mid two twenties, maybe two thirty tops factory. But I'll clean them up, do my work that I do to them, get them up to two seventy plus on the intake. Now these are going on naturally aspirated five seven in a Trans Am, so he's going fairly moderate on his camshaft. I'm I'm looking for him to pick up fifty to seventy horse just from the head porting alone throw in a new cam and then have somebody who knows what they're doing tune it uh, he'll be more than happy with the uh, results but anyway I just want to do another video it's been a while I haven't really done much been kind of sidetracked went racing and blew up the rear end and that thing's being a pain in the neck it's been uh, running like crap ever since we took it to the track so I tuned up the blazer and reset the timing for not running nitrous and it seems to be running a little bit better I need to pull those plugs out of there because it probably burned some of them plugs on the nitrous who knows but um, other than that that's what we're doing right now I will have some videos coming up on some um, tri I don't know if Chrysler calls it tri-power, three deuces I'm not sure what uh, Chrysler used as their terminology but I'm going to do uh, carb rebuilds. I got to rebuild a three deuce setup for a 440 Chrysler. So I'm going to do some videos on that. Pulling the carburetors apart. He's got some trick aftermarket metering plates that he wants to put in there and a few other uh, upgrades. But uh, I'm going to do a little video on rebuilding that tri power or rebuilding the carburetors for the tri power. Because I never did get any information from him on port and the intake. Um, I'm going to try to knock out these heads. Try to get them done. So we can get them into the machine shop to uh, get the valve job done on them. And get, the set, get them set up with the springs. I was trying to get him to do some aftermarket valves. But since he's doing a naturally aspirated, no nitrous, you know, just basically fun car. I think these stock valves will be fine because he's not even going to rev it super high. But we'll just add a little head flow and a little bit of cam lift and a tune. And uh, he'll be more than happy with that. So anyway, these are those 241 LS heads. Just in case anybody wants to see it. It says 5.7 in that little boss. This thing would roll over far enough. There's the two. Well, it's upside down. 241 casting just in case anybody doubted me because uh something you people may not know the 241s are dang good head don't get me wrong the head that everybody wants from the factory is the 243 casting which has the same size valves as these but bumps the airflow from two I want to say 227 up to like 250 253 somewhere in the low 250s 250 plus CFM is no joke that can make some serious horsepower I'm gonna blow that out of the water by 20 plus CFM and they're not even gonna compete with this thing on the exhaust side so anyway this is the next project I have I enjoy these LS heads because they're pretty straightforward in the dimensions and the blending the castings are absolutely top notch no porosity everything is where it's supposed to be you don't run into problems when you're porting they already flow good and you can make them flow great I love the LS heads that's why I'm making the switch to LS on my blazer because I've put off this modern technology long enough and I'm gonna go ahead and build one of these motors for my blazer 
which is funny because all my friends have been making fun of me about being an old man. But anyway, there's the uh, 241 LS heads. Just wanted to give you guys a shot of the uh, exhaust shape, exhaust port shaping, the ability to raise the roof 235 thousandths, and it still will blend in perfectly to the contour of the factory port. Uh, it's just amazing what you can do with these LS heads. Uh, keep watching. I'll try to do some updates as I get some more work done. And as always, if you have anything you want to see, let me know. I'll try to get it done.